In this video series, we've been talking about amortization. In the first video, we learned how to do straight line amortization. Uh, that's where amortization is the same every full year. In the second video, we learned units of production amortization. That's where amortization fluctuates with the amount we use our asset. Uh, the final method we're going to learn, and it's outlined here in part C, again it's the same question we're doing, we've done parts A and B, we're just going to look at part C now. Uh, the final method we're going to learn is called double declining balance. And what double declining balance says is, it's more realistic for an asset to lose more of its value up front. They say when you, uh, when a car loses its, the most value is the moment you drive it off the lot. And I always think of double declining balance method in this way. It's called an accelerated amortization method and it, it tries to capture the fact that assets lose value or drop in value quite quickly in the early years and slower over time. So I'm going to actually, uh, just, Hold on. I'm going to just uh, erase the first parts A and B and we'll focus on what was part C uh, on double declining balance method. So let me get my pen tool ready uh, and let's read through the question. Uh, the question says, Tinker Inc. buys a new truck for $25,000 on September 1st, 2012. The truck is expected to be useful for five years, after which time the manager hopes to sell it for $5,000. Uh, the manager estimates the truck will be driven for 300,000 kilometers during its five-year life. Uh, the company has a December 31st fiscal year. Assuming the manager wishes to use double declining balance amortization, calculate the amortization for uh, each year of ownership of the truck. Okay. So, uh, when we did straight line and double declining balance, we had to calculate the amortizable cost. When we do double declining balance, that's not going to be the starting point of our question. Uh, the starting point of our question is actually to calculate a percentage, and it's based on straight line amortization. So we base our uh, double declining balance on the number of years, in the same way we did straight line amortization. So with straight line, we said, okay, we're going to amortize this asset over five years. With double declining, we just want to make that a ratio. Each year represents one-fifth amortization. And if I want to restate that as a percentage, that's 20% amortization. And again, how did I get that? Well, I just took the number one, always number one, and divided it by five years. And I went one divided by five, that's 20%. One fifth is twenty percent. Now that would be great if we were doing single declining balance. This method is called double declining balance. So you take that twenty percent and double it. Twenty percent times two is forty percent. That's what makes this an accelerated amortization method. We are going to amortize this thing fast. Our amortization is not twenty percent; it's forty percent per year. Now it's a declining balance method, and so the math of it's a little bit different. And you kind of have to—I find—you have to make a table to to figure out how to do this. So let's make our table. Uh, so we'll put year on the left. Uh, then I'm going to put beginning. BV, and what BV stands for is the book value of our assets, so our beginning book value. Um, I'll, I'll put a column here for partial year, and it's just for the first year, really. If I have a partial year, I want to put the number of months down. Uh, then I'm going to put the rate, which we calculated as 40%, our amortization expense, and our ending BV or our ending value, our ending book value of our assets. So we're going to fill out this table for all five years of this asset's useful life starting in 2012. So in 2012 our beginning book values, which is what we paid for the asset, we bought an asset for 25000 according to our records the asset's worth 25000 Is the first year a partial year? Absolutely. It's only going to be from September 2012 to December 31st, 2012. That's our fiscal year. And whenever I talk years, I'm talking fiscal years. It just happens. We have a December 31st fiscal year. And, but I'm only going to be worried about September, October, November, December. Years matter here, just like with straight line. Four months. So I'm going to say, oh yeah, it's four twelfths of the year. Uh, my amortization rate. 40%. So my amortization expense is actually quite easy now that I've laid it out. It's 25,000 times 4 twelfths times 40%. So let's uh, 
crunch that number um, 25,000 times 4 divided by 12 times 0.4 and I get the number 3333 so now I've got to say oh, after I've done that what's the value of my asset according to my records the value of my asset according to my records is the 25 grand I paid for it minus the 33 33 I've amortized off of it 25 minus 33 33 is 21667 oops 21667 so 2012 is in the bag. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what about that $5,000 residual value that we've been worried about? Well, $5,000 residual value isn't going to come into play until the very end. But yes, when we finish this question, and I don't know how far down to go, I need to remind myself, I've got to stop when I get to a $5,000 residual value. I can't amortize past that. I have to end on that $5,000 number, but we'll worry about that later. Um, let's do 2013. So 2013, I've got to say, okay, what did I start 2013 with in terms of a book value? And the book value at the beginning of 2013 was 21,667. Is it a partial year? No, I'm not even going to worry about that column. Then. The amortization rate is indeed 40%. 21,667 times 40% is 8,667. So our amortization expense here is going to be 86.67 bringing the the uh, ending book value from 21.667 minus 86.667 sorry my uh, mouth full from these uh, numbers and I get an ending book value of $13,000 good thing now our numbers are going to be a lot more even 2014 I started with an asset with a book value of $13,000 again it's a full year it's not a partial year I want to amortize it for 40 percent uh, 13,000 times 40 percent is 5200 I started the year with 13,000 I've reduced the assets value by 5200 13,000 minus 5200 is 7800 on to 2015 I started with an asset that was on my books for 7800 I'm gonna take 40 percent amortization and so 7800 times 0 0.4 is 3120 now I'm gonna stop right here and I can see I'm bumping into a problem I've said that I'm not going to amortize this asset below $5,000. This asset has to remain at $5,000. And I can see if I amortize this for 40%, which was 3120, 7800 minus 3120 is going to take me below $5,000. It's going to take my ending book value down below uh, $5,000. So again, if I had done this, I'll maybe just squeeze it in here at the bottom of the page because we're not going to do it. I would go 7800, 40%, and get. 3120 and of course 7800 minus 3120 is uh, 4680 well I've got to put on the brakes I've got to hit the stop sign here I can't go below my residual value in terms of amortization so in this case I'm not even going to multiply by 40 percent I'm going to say look I need to end up at 5000 no lower if my default amortization is going to take me below 5000 I just plug in the number that gets me there and the correct number to get us there looks like 2800 and again that's just 7800 minus the 5000 is 2800 now for 2016 2017 I don't amortize anymore I start with an asset worth 5000 my amortization is zero I end with an asset of 5000 and the same is true in 2017 5000 zero ending at 5000 again this bottom was just to show you uh, I'm gonna just scratch it out because that's not what we did so double declining balance as you can see is a much more aggressive amortization uh, method and interestingly again we don't start with our amortizable cost we start with our book value or the cost of our asset uh, and we amortize based on that where our residual value comes in is we've got to know when to stop amortizing the asset in this case we stopped in 2015 uh, that was our final year of amortization after that 
if we're still using the asset and we still think it can be traded for five thousand dollars or, or sold for five thousand dollars we just keep it on the books at five thousand dollars this is called double declining balance method and as you can see it's a very accelerated amortization method now when I add up my amortization expense there should be a familiar number 3333 33 plus 8667 is uh, 12,000 5200 and 2800 is 8,000 total up the whole column and you get 20,000 and that of course is our amortizable cost we said we were going to amortize this asset for 20,000 now we have now comparing our three methods going all the way to the bottom straight line same amortization every year for each full fiscal year. Uh, units of production varies with our production. If we drive more kilometers, we amortize more. If we drive fewer kilometers, we amortize less. Last double declining balance is aggressive amortization. It amortizes your asset quickly. And so you can see it's, it's a much higher level of amortization in the early years than the other two, and, and it fully amortizes the asset much more quickly. So those are the three methods of amortization that are taught in most intro accounting classes. Certainly those are the three that I touch on uh, in a big way in my class, and I hope you've uh, learned and understood all of them. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to sell an asset at a gain or loss.